you hate the thought of working past 55 or 60? Do you hate not being able to live the life you deserve today? Do you hate not knowing what your financial future looks like? It's time to stop doing what you hate. Here's your host, Mr. Harold Green. Hello, everyone. This is Harold Green of Bright Tree Wealth Management. And uh, it's time to stop doing what you hate. Hopefully, uh, you're doing good. You're doing well. You're having a fantastic day. Man, what a day. What a day. And uh, it's August 5th. I normally don't say the date that I'm recording the show, but it's August 5th, 2024. And uh, I have a question for you. Where are you today? What are you doing? What does your portfolio look like? Is it up? Is it down? Are you buying? Or are you selling? Now, today's show is going to be purely an investment show. And investments do carry risk of loss. Past performance is no indicator of future results. And before you buy any stock or bond or mutual fund, do your due diligence and understand your risk score, your time horizons, and make sure you are trading or buying according to a well-balanced, comprehensive overall financial plan. And so with that being said, I, I want to talk to you a little bit about today. Crazy day in the stock market, down over a thousand points in the Dow. We're down almost a thousand points in the NASDAQ. Today was the day that a lot of stuff just got washed out. And as I always say, you know, or as the saying goes, selling begets more selling. We had tons of technical downdrafts in the market today and over the last week or so. It's just been heavy selling. Whatever profits people had, they took them for whatever reason. I'm not sure why, you know, unless you have a need or something for the money, I don't know why you would go in there and sell it. The CNN fear and greed index is at extreme fear. Warren Buffett said when there's blood in the water, you know, you, you, that's when you go take advantage of it. When, when people are fearful, you be greedy. And when people are greedy, you be fearful. But for some reason, he unloaded half of his Apple <laughs> stock worth a gazillion dollars. And he's sitting on about 300 something billion dollars of, of cash, right? And as I was talking to my clients today, I said, you know, what Warren Buffett does is no indication of what you ought to be doing with your portfolio. Warren Buffett is a mega billionaire. And maybe he had taxes he needed to pay or something. Who knows? I'm sure he sold according to his financial plan. And I just on some whim to just unload his, his Apple stock. Maybe... Maybe there's something going on with this health and he's trying to get his estate squared away. Who knows? The story has not come out. And so I don't want you trading based off of anything I say in today's show. It's for information purposes only. And the title of my show is going to be Bold and Aggressive Moves Part 2, or as I like to call them, BAMs, right? Bold and Aggressive Moves. And but I want you to understand your risk tolerance. And so today's show, I want to dedicate today's show to all my clients who are high risk and high reward people with risk scores of between 90 and 100. And if you don't know where your risk score is, here's what I'd like to offer you for, I would say, the next two weeks only. You can call my office and ask my assistant to send you a link to do a free risk assessment. And what I would do for you is once your risk score comes back, we can upload your portfolio to that software and we can get a better idea of, are you within range in your portfolio, your out of range, or what adjustments you probably need to make uh, according to your financial plan. And I will do that for you for free. And then you can go and decide how you want to handle your business on that. So are you ready? One, two, three, let's get it. Now, the first thing I want to talk about is I want to talk about the economy. And right now, like I said earlier before in another show, we're in a bifurcated economy. We're in the story, the tale of the two haves, the haves and the have not. You have people that are doing extremely well, and you have people that are doing extremely bad. And for some people, they don't think about others in that regard. They only think about themselves and their situation. And so if you are in the tell of the haves, I want to talk to you about your portfolio and some of the things you probably can do in order to take advantage of bold and aggressive moves according to your risk score. But it's only according to your risk score. There are tons of opportunities 
in the market right now that you folks ought to be taking advantage of based on your risk score. And if no one has ever told you that, or your advisor is too lazy or sitting on their hands, or maybe you're scared, I want to talk to you about that. I'm not trying to sound bold or braggadocious or anything like that, but today, days like today, this is when you really ought to be reassessing your financial situation, looking at what cash you have on the sidelines and figuring out where to be putting that money to work. And I'm going to give you a sneak peek into my scoop and score investment strategy. What's down right now and why? And that's a really good question. A lot of the tech stocks are down just because I think that there's been a lot of jawboning and people bemoaning the stocks. And, and I think a lot of people like are, I don't know if they're jealous or I don't know what it is, but there's just like this thing about them. When they get on TV and say, there's more pain to come, you know, the selling is not over yet. I really don't get what they're saying. I think what it is, is maybe some of them have sold out too maturely and now you want to get an opportunity to get back in. So they'd rather see NVIDIA fall all the way down to $5 so they can get on TV and brag about when they bought it at $5, when it came from, you know, a thousand down to $5 or whatever. I hate seeing that stuff. And if you are a individual, you, you manage your own portfolio, it can be quite frightening. As a matter of fact, the scariest thing of today was Schwab was down. I tried to log into my personal Schwab accounts and I couldn't do anything. I wanted to back up the truck. But you know what I've been doing is I've been loading into some of these positions, even as they've been going down, freeing up money, loading into these positions, even as they've been going down. You know why? Because I've done it before. And this time for me, it's no different. And when we look at the state of the world and you look at what's going on in, with Iran and Israel, and you look at all the turmoil in the Middle East, you have to ask yourself one question. Some people say, Harold, I don't want to invest any money right now because this administration is going to screw it all up. You have to ask yourself this serious question. Who in the world would make a policy decision or error so bad that it would end humanity as we know it today? Who would do that? Like what person on your team would be like, boss, oops, I just started World War III. Oops. Like, no, th that doesn't happen that way. There's teams and teams of people that make these decisions. And you have to believe in the system that they're going to get it right. Whether you believe in that political party or not, you got to believe they're going to get it right because humanity is at stake here. And you have to understand that it's going to settle down. We don't know when, but it's going to settle down. It might take new leadership. It's kind of like you go by the restaurant, it says, uh, <laughs> uh, under new management, <laughs> same restaurant, same food, <laughs> same employees, but under different management. Sometimes you gotta, you gotta, you gotta shut it all down and start it up again. Like, you know, you gotta shut, you gotta shut it down. The location might be great. And, and that's the tough thing about where we're at right now. So you gotta believe that they're going to make the right decisions. They're going to get it right. The back channels are working and they're going to get this thing calmed down. Because it's, it's in none of our best interest for them to start another world war. Who wants to see that? There are no survivors in that situation. So as bad as the market looks for me, days like this is when I, quote unquote, back up the truck. And I just load up. you know. And I just had some very comical conversations with some clients today. But what's down again? Well, NVIDIA is down. Microsoft's down. Apple's down. Tesla's down. Everybody's down. SMCI is down everybody's down. CrowdStrike was up a little bit today just because they came out and they said, hey, yo, you know what? This Delta's problem was not our fault. They're totally incompetent over there. It's kind of like what CrowdStrike says. And if you believe them, then you would understand the rise in their stock price today. They've been hammered, okay? Beaten up real bad. Now, here's the thing I want to tell you. Technical selling has nothing to do these days with the fundamentals of how a company is operating. We look at their free cash flow. We look at their, their long-term debt. We look at their you know, cash reserves, all these different things, right? Earnings before taxes and depreciation, right? Return on capital invested, okay? You, we look at these things, and if that stuff is pointing straight up to the right, why in the world will we sell on a day like this? If these things are pointing straight to the right, right? The debt is going down. Everything else is going up, up up and you sell on a day like this because you're afraid so schwab locked us out we couldn't get in and trade okay a lot of uh, was it fidelity fidelity vanguard somebody else was down 
But for me, as a as an institutional investor, right, as a as a person who manages clients' money, our platform was up and working great. So guess what I did? I got in there and I rotated some positions. I trimmed some cash on some stuff. I took money out of other things like CVX and all of that stuff. And I said, okay, I want to take this money and I want to put it to work. And so we went in and we bought some NVIDIA options. I believe we bought some AMD options. I bought some TLT options. And I also bought some more NVIDIA stock for the clients. And it's all part of our, our trading strategy, which basically is a buy and hold strategy for some of the positions with an options overlay strategy on those same positions when they get beat up. We did that with NVIDIA last year. We made a killing on that. And that was exciting. Again, understand your risk tolerance. I'm not saying for you to go out and buy NVIDIA. I'm not saying for you to go out and buy anything. But you need to be working with someone to, 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 to create this plan in order to make sure you can take advantage of it. So the scoop and score strategy is very simple. And, and I'll explain it like this. When the fundamentals of a company are intact, but they're facing technical pressures, selling, 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 I'll go selling all the way down through their support levels, okay, then that's the time to take a serious look at them again to see if it's time to add to them, right? And we can do this with any company on the planet. And, that, and, and by, the, by the way, that's what, we, that's what we do. We find them, we wait for the right opportunity, and then we jump in with both feet. Now, again, this is according to the strategy. Options are extremely risky because you have, you have the ability to lose the entire option. But there are some things that you can do with the option. You can put stop limits on them, right? Trailing stops. And so if it, if it goes up 20%, you can say, hey, I want to put a 5% stop on it so that if it goes down 5%, I automatically get sold. The problem with that is the options fluctuate so crazily, you can be up 30% in a day, down 30% in the same day. It just, it just depends on how volatile it is. So you have to understand when to sell and when to hold or when to buy. So when to buy is when, when the stocks are beaten down for no good reason other than the fact that everybody's scared that the world's going to come to an end. That's when you make your money. And for the clients, I call it flying the plane. It's very bumpy. It's very, very turbulent. But we're going to come out on the other side. And then I want to be able to look back on this day five years later or even six months later and say, oh my God, I'm so glad we did that. Now, last time we did that was in October of last year. I literally had people wanting to throw me overboard and get rid of me because they're like, wait a minute, these NVIDIA trades aren't working because again, this current administration came out and did some stuff. I ran the, the Israel situation happened last year. Right after we made those trades, the geopolitical thing just hit and, and the world, it just went to hell in a handbasket. It just went crazy. The market went crazy. But it seems like people rediscovered a newfound love for the stock market after that. And they started jumping in with both hands and both feet. FOMO kicked in, fear of missing out. And I think the same thing is going to happen this time, unless we go into a deep, deep recession or whatnot, which I don't think we will. Okay. And I was talking to the clients today about the jobs report and different things like that. And our unemployment numbers include illegal aliens in it. These are people that come into this country. They have not had a job before. So I believe the unemployment numbers should focus on Americans, people in this country that have had a job and they have lost their job and now they're seeking a new job. But because of the way they do the surveys, it includes all households in the United States, whether you're a legal household or an illegal household, it doesn't matter. And they include that number. So we're dealing with a lot of artificially inflated data. Our jobs reports are overinflated with bad data. Why do I say that? Because they always come back and revise the numbers down. You have tons of economists working in the Fed people with PhD, some of the smartest people in the room. But what is going into the data? Is it political? And a majority of the people that work in the Federal Reserve lean one way. And I'm not going to say what that way is. So when I started reading these numbers, it kind of skews towards making one political party look good. And that is what the Fed is having to fight. They're having to fight all of these nuances and things that are put in these numbers. And you don't know what's real. And so when the new jobs, the jobs report came out the other day, it was bad. And when the Fed didn't cut rates, that made it even worse. The Japan situation happened. You can look that up as to what happened in Japan. The stock market crashed over 12% in a day. The worst for them since 1987. You have the perfect storm brewing here that's creating as much fear as possible. And so when I sat down at my desk today, woke up, got my prayer time in, got my Starbucks coffee in, got my journaling in, got my affirmations in, got that stuff in, sat down 
And you know what I said to myself? Let's freaking go. Let's go. Fear has a way of gripping you and not letting you analyze the situation and make the moves that you need to make. And I say to myself, okay, are we making bold and aggressive moves or are we just being willy-nilly foolish? No, we operate according to strategy. And as I told a client today, if I'm not buying today for you or at least nibbling at stuff for you today, I'm not doing my job. Oh, you know, I'm just going to wait and see. I'm going to wait and see. I'm going to wait and I'm going to see. Well, tonight, Apple's up $2.63 a share. We'll see if it holds tomorrow. Tesla's up $6.42 a share. You sold your Tesla today. Man, you're you going to wake up in the morning and be like, what did I do that for? I should have waited. NVIDIA is up $3.12 after hours. Microsoft's up $6.60 after hours. CrowdStrike is up another $5.55 an hour. SMCI is up $15.16 per share after hours when they were down $15.82 after hours. So today I bought more super micro options and they report tomorrow. That's just me. That's what I did. Dell's up. AMD's up. Vert is up. Amazon is up. Arm Holdings is up. Meta is up. <laughs> Everything here on my screener is up. I don't think I can find a stock in my screener that's down in after I was trading today. I don't accept Hilton. I don't know what they did. I guess they reported they report soon, but man, they I gotta look that up. But I don't own any Hilton. Honda Motors up. Polaris is up. Visa's up. Costco's up. Nucor is up. And on and on and on and on. I'm scrolling through here. I can't find anything except that one, that one on Hilton. And today's washout, I think, was I think maybe the end of all of the weak hands being be, being washed out of the market and waiting on an opportunity to get back in. Today is not the day that that you sell. Okay, either you hold or you buy. And the only reason why you sell today is because you either want to get totally out of the stock market. You're really afraid and you want to lock in your profits and take your money and run, right? If you have any profits left or you're dealing with a situation where you need the money, but here's what I'm going to submit to you today. I was up big a couple of weeks ago on my NVIDIA options. I'm talking huge. If I would have sold a couple of my NVIDIA options, I would have been looking at handing over the IRS $250,000 in taxes just on those options alone, not including my income, but on those options. Why? Because I had backed up the truck before. Okay. I backed up the truck and I did my, looked at my tax situation and said, my God, I already sent a lot of money this, this year anyway for estimated taxes for next year. I said, what the hell is this? I said, okay, all right, cool out. That's a phrase we used to use growing up, cool out. Okay. You guys probably know what chill out means. Cool out. We said, cool out. All right, just cool for a second. So I did the math and it was kind of like, all right, so I'm up 500 and almost 600%. And if I sell, that's going to be huge. My options don't expire until January and December of 2026. I got a long ways to go. NVIDIA is, they have a target price on them. I think it's 200 something dollars a share now. Like it's uh, 200 with a Median target price, average target price trading around 144. They're trading at $100 a share. So that's a 43% upside from here. When you do an options overlay on it, depending on which one you choose, that can be a 100% return, or depending on the time, it can be a 500% return. It just depends on, on which option you buy. And that's our thing in our scoop and score strategy. I research out and I run the numbers. We have software. And what it does is it, it gives me numbers to, to work with. And I have to decide which option I want to buy based on price and so on and so forth, which is, which is very interesting. Okay. But NVIDIA has an upside of that. And, and I said, okay, if I sell now guaranteed, I come next year, unless I have massive losses on my portfolio, which I don't plan on having, I, I need to send the IRS another $250,000. But if I wait through the turbulence, I could be up a thousand percent next year. So my NVIDIA went from being up almost 600% to being up, I think it's 293% now. Like that's still a lot of return. That's way more money than I had before. Way more. But I said, okay, there's still more to run in this in this stock. I know there's more to go. I know we can get more out of this trade. 
So I decided not to sell it prematurely and then pay the taxes to the IRS. I've decided to wait. And the only reason why I would sell that stock is, or that options or those options is because I really needed the money for something. However, that's why we have dividend paying whole life insurance. And we've been funding this dividend paying whole life insurance for the last 15 years or more. And we've been putting almost everything we could into dividend paying life insurance. The truth is, I didn't have a 401k plan or anything like that. So, and I didn't believe in 401ks at the time. I just funded everything in life insurance because I knew that my cash reserves were accessible, after tax, adequate, and always there. I didn't have to worry about my cash reserves going up and down in the stock market, up and down, up and down, up and down. If I needed to pay tuition, I had my cash reserves. I didn't have to wait till my stocks came back to, to, to pay for something, wait for my stocks to come back to buy a car, wait for my stocks to come back. To, I didn't have to do that. And that's all built out into my financial plan. So in situations like these, this is where you have to look at your plan and say, okay, if I make this move, what's going to happen? If the first thing you did this morning was wake up and you sold based on all the fear that you saw, that's not a bold and aggressive move unless, I, I don't know, you would have to explain to me how selling your top positions on a day like this with the fundamentals still intact, explain that to me how that's a bold and aggressive move, unless you got threatened <laughs> at gunpoint or something or your spouse was like, yo, get out of the stuff or I'm gone. Either you get out of the stocks or get out of that stuff or I'm getting out of the house. Like, <laughs> yeah, I would have sold too. You know what I mean? Like if my wife came at me like that, yeah, that would have been a bad day. You know, or you had a client call you and say, you know, hey, sell, sell, sell. And normally on days like this, I don't run from these things. I always record a video, no matter how bad it is. I don't put my head in the sand and go hide somewhere and hope I don't get any phone calls. No, I'm, I tell my clients, I'm going to face this thing head on. We're going to fight right now. We're not going to run. And I tell my clients, what if you got loose change in the sofa? I don't care whatever it is, put it together. If you're not using it, send it to me. And these days like this, I have the money and then I can put it to work based on risk tolerance and different things like that. But if I'm just sitting there saying, oh, don't worry, it's going to get better. It's going to get better. No, I'm not doing my job. Okay. If I got to sell one stock that I think is good to buy one that I think is better, that's part of our strategy. And if you're not working with somebody, who's encouraging you to build a plan and to make bold and aggressive moves based on your risk score, you got to think about that. I harp on the 97.3. 97% of people in the country will retire without enough to live on to last them in their entire lives. Why? Because they're not making bold and aggressive moves when they need to in their portfolios. They're just saying, oh, you know, I'm low risk. And so because I'm low risk, then I got to do it like this. Then yeah, yeah, that's true. But what if there are times where you can build a solid plan which allows you to be within your risk range. For example, you have half a million dollars in cash and you have half a million dollars that you can invest. What will be your risk score? We can build that out in the software and then tell you, okay, this is your cash position here, dividend paying life insurance, annuities, or whatever it might be. And this is your long-term money over here, your 10, 15, 20 year money over here that we are going to take some risk with. And you have to look at that. Now, if you simply say, Harold, that's just not for me. I like bonds. I like to be able to sleep at night. I like to be able to, you know, not wake up and read the news and, and see things down a thousand points. I don't want to see that. Then that's absolutely fine. However, if you are in the 97%, you're going to have to make a choice. And I think what it is, is people really don't understand risk. They don't understand the risk tolerance. They don't know how to hedge the downside. And like I told clients today, look, the reason why I didn't sell your options and put that in, in profit is because we already took a lot of profit on these options this year. And you're already going to owe a lot of taxes at the end of the year anyway. So I'm just going to be making the situation worse, right? And the thing I hate the most is in April when clients are sitting down with their CPAs and CPAs are, they're good people. They're very conservative though. Most CPAs I know, they're very conservative. And they look at your tax bill and they're like, gosh, dang it. You guys owe $60,000 in additional taxes. What happened here? And they panic and like, oh my God, what happened? And, the, and he looks at your statement and says, oh my God, you have capital gains here, short term, short term, bam, 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 bam. Oh my God, did Harold tell you guys you're going to owe all this money? And they freak out and say, Harold didn't tell us anything. And then they freak out and they panic. And I'm on vacation. And I get all these calls in April like, no, we don't want that. So we work with our clients to get ahead of it. But you have to understand on days like this, it's August 5th, 2024. Are you buying? Are you holding? Are you selling? And if you are a risk score of 90 to 100, you ought to be putting some money to work in the right place. And if you don't have anybody that's doing that for you, I highly encourage you 
to get on my schedule so we can get a better idea of your risk tolerance, overall financial plan, and help you decide what bold and aggressive moves to make. So thanks for allowing me to share this with you folks today. And until next time, everybody, one, two, three, let's get it. This is the podcastfactory.com.